welcome to Movies Suck. Well, today I'm having a look at Star Wars, the sequel trilogy on Rotten Tomatoes. I know this isn't a very good metric for is anything good anymore because Rotten Tomatoes, as we all know, is just another bit of shill media that is pretty meaningless and it tries to pull Disney. Because, let's face it, and it's a fact, Rotten Tomatoes is bollocks. The only thing I trust on Rotten Tomatoes occasionally is the audience score, which is what I usually come here for. But at the minute, I'm coming here just generally. Because I wanted to compare the scores here. These scores are, in my opinion, based on predetermined opinions of the Star Wars franchise of that time period. Now, let's look at... Uh, Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. Now, I went into this film, I think we all did. We all, we all knew the hype, we were like, yes, Star Wars, again, they're continuing the trilogy. That's the original trilogy, because let's face it, the prequels, whilst now, having realised the horror that is Disney Star Wars, the prequels seem actually pretty good on the whole. Well, everyone's thinking to themselves, Hmm, Phantom Menace wasn't actually that bad. It's not compared with things like The Last Jedi. Ah, oh, don't get me started. But the thing is, when you look at this score, it's 93% for the critics and 86% for the audience. Now, there's a reason why these scores are so high, and that's because people were amped that they were bringing Star Wars back. We were all so excited. I remember the optimism of seeing, yes, Star Wars is coming back. Oh my god. And we were going to have the original characters back. Harrison Ford was still alive. Mark Hamill was still alive. Princess Leia. Or, sorry, Carrie Fisher, still alive. I mean, oh my god. Oh, it was just amazing. Okay, some guys have passed on and couldn't reprise it all, but still. It was just amazing that these guys were still here. We could get them all onto Star Wars. It was amazing. And then we went to see The Force Awakens. And, well, it wasn't great. From my opinion personally, I went into that film so super, super excited. So excited. I was so looking forward to this. It was amazing. And then I watched the film. And within, probably within about 20 minutes... Certainly within 30 minutes, I was already on the fence, thinking to myself, hang on, this isn't proper Star Wars, what's going on? I mean, it looks like Star Wars, and it's got some Star Wars characters, I mean, personally, my favourite Star Wars character, Han Solo, and they killed Han Solo. I mean, there were those rumours that Harrison Ford wanted to have uh, Han Solo killed off in The Return of the Jedi, but... Those were just rumours, and anyway, it's it's just acting. I'm sure Han, I'm sure Harrison Ford wasn't that bothered. It's a big joke. But they killed Han Solo, the coolest character in Star Wars. They just killed him. And they had his son do it. And not even the proper son, since that should have been Jason. But anyway, yeah, fuck you, Disney, for deciding to get rid of the expanded universe. Fuck you, Disney. Fuck you very much. But, this is the point. The point is that 93% from the critics, because the critics can't be trusted anyway, generally, but it's because it was exciting. They're bringing Star Wars back, and that's why the audience score of 86%, even though they killed off Han Solo, because, let's face it, we're all like, well, this is this story's really, really about Luke Skywalker. So, okay, they killed Han Solo. Alright, that's a massive bummer, because he was the coolest character. But... There's still a chance that this could be good. Personally, I checked out after The Force Awakens. It was clear to me that this was not Star Wars and that Disney didn't give a shit about the original characters. Probably because they'd have to pay George Lucas money in some way or something like that. So we went from The Force Awakens, which was a meh kind of film, but the excitement of new Star Wars gave you an 86% audience score. That's all about excitement. This is the coming into it. Hopes were high. They were dashed a bit because they killed Han Solo. But there was still a chance that this could go well. And then we move across to 
The Last Jedi. Oh man, that's that's got the that sounds. It sounds like the knell of doom. And we went to see this, and oh, words do not describe the huge amount of fail. The fail levels for this film were so high that nearly nothing could save this in any way. And the way they've treated the original fans, especially when it came to this film, those guys have stuck with this for 40 years. And they just destroyed, destroyed Luke Skywalker. Destroyed the legacy of the original trilogy. And the prequel trilogy, essentially, as well. But, and, ah, oh, the heartbreak. The sheer heartbreak and soul-crushing misery that came from this film. The, the, the point where you knew... Disney doesn't care about stoles, Disney cares about money. Disney didn't want to bring the original cast back. Disney brought the original cast back for nostalgia. They didn't bring them back because they wanted to have the original cast in these films. That doesn't help them. They want to make new films and make those films go on and on forever and ever and ever. So they just they just quickly get rid of this cast member and that one, that one, that one, quickly kill them. I was unbelievably heartbroken. But... You know who wasn't? The critics. The critics gave this film a 91%. 91%! I believe if we look up the score they gave uh, Star Wars A New Hope, the original first Star Wars, I believe that sits on something like uh, 93 or, I forget, 93 or 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. There are critics out there that believe this film is basically on a par with A New Hope. They think this film is on a par with The Empire Strikes Back. And this is how you know the critics don't really care either. Some of them care. There's bound to be a few down here that probably care. That think that Star Wars is worth saving. Star Wars is not Breaking Bad. And the same narrative tricks that worked for the latter feel generally out of place in the former. Yes, yeah, so two out of four. But there's these crazy people. These truly crazy people that saw this film and thought, wow, wow, love it. This is so good. I mean, what's this guy's rating? Fanatics will love it. For the rest of us, it's a tolerably good time. Rating B. Peter Rayner. What kind of score is that? Is he scoring it for the fanatics or for the rest of us, which are having a tolerably good time? In other words, they're just about putting up with it. It's okay. It's not amazing, but it gets a B, which basically means it's a very, very good film. If it has an A, that makes it an excellent film. So what kind of scoring is this? The, the critics really do just seem like shills, don't they? And it's because these people are all progressives. They're not Star Wars fans, they're just progressives. They like the way that Star Wars has been ruined. The lore just thrown out the window. The expanded universe ignored. Motherfuckers. The audience score, the real people who went to see this, the fans, and obviously the not-so-fans and the, the recent fans who turned up for The Force Awakens uh, have missed the rest of everything, because they weren't there for that. They thought this film was shit. 43%. It's a shit score. That's not average. That's below average. That's the sort of film that you turn on and then you're going to change the channel after a second. You go, oh yeah, stop. Oh, no, yeah, turn it over. That's what this film was. It was a film that made you want to turn over. Which is completely fair enough. It destroyed everything about Star Wars. It left nothing for the fans. It left nothing to build upon. There was nowhere to go from here. And that leads us to where they did go from here. Which was the rise of Skywalker. Standing at a monumental 58% from the critics. Because you know what? They're allowed to criticise The Last Jedi now. Disney has allowed it. Fandom menace had an effect. But it's too late. This film is a jumbled mess. People were willing to say what they really thought at this point. Disney had kind of given the go-ahead for the people to say what they actually think. And it's not good news. Mainly there are a lot of shills out there that are still saying, Yeah, watch this film, it's fantastic. But 
we know those people are either too far down the progressive road to look over their shoulder and see where the rest of us are. They don't give a shit. It's like when you're snowboarding on a mountain, you head down the mountain, those people, or you know who the riders are, those guys that just keep riding because they love it, and they, but there's, they're with a bunch of other people and it's a possible avalanche day. They're not keeping an eye on who's behind them. But they're down the mountain, they've had a great time. The rest of us are watching out for our friends. Ah, oh, really, really sad. But they gave it a 48%. That goes to, or well, 58%, sorry. That goes to prove how bad this film truly is. The audience score's not here. I was hoping the audience score would be in by now, but it's not. I'll come back to that sometime. But I was watching this throughout the night. It got up to 59% at one point, and it's been down even lower than 58 I don't know where it's going to sit in the end. Will it make 60%? I think that's a tough ask. I mean, once they've aggregated enough people, maybe, but that's not going to be a real representation of how this should have scored. We all know where this film should score, and it's down there with The Last Jedi. J.J. Abrams brought back, or should I say Jar Jar Abrams, brought back to try and save what Rian Johnson destroyed with his blasé, I really don't give a shit about Star Wars attitude, even though he said, I'm a fan, really, honest, honest, you guys, I'm a fan, whilst I kill off Luke Skywalker and make his whole legacy meaningless. The death of Darth Vader, or Anakin Skywalker, when he destroys the Emperor, meaningless. Oh, I mean, admittedly, there is some, the expanded universe allows for the return of Emperor Palpatine, he did return. Technically, he returned twice, I believe, as a mad clone. But, is that where they went with this film? I've not actually seen it yet, and honestly, I don't know that I'm actually going to bother. I was on the fence today. I was thinking to myself, do I go? Do I go? Because I checked the cinema, and apart from the just after midnight showing, which was five past midnight, the cinemas are half full at best. Tomorrow, they'll be empty. Ah, uh, do I go see it? I don't know. I very much doubt I really want to. Why did they bring back Palpatine? They had to bring him back because they got rid of Snoke. Because Rian Johnson just f fucked up Jar Jar Abrams' storytelling. Not that Jar Jar Abrams has any storytelling. He has a, does a bit of rehashing and he can't finish anything, which is probably a good example of this film. Just put some flashy images on the screen and goes, yeah, look at this. From what I've heard, though, this film is a clusterfuck. A real clusterfuck. There's a good description of um, in this review of how the Star Wars movies turned out. This is a movie. This is a review by James Berardinelli. He says, back in 1893, burned out after completing the original Star Wars trilogy, George Lucas opined that he might be done. 22 years later, with the with the release of the Revenge of the Sith, and after being pilloried by fans about the prequels, he said the saga was over. But, as a brand, Star Wars was always too big not to continue, so Disney paid Lucas four billion for the rise to his galaxy far, far away, and proceeded to strip mine it. The so-called sequel trilogy, a once mythological, likely never to be made affair, has turned into a sad swan song for a series once universally, to, once universally beloved, and now greeted in some fan quarters with shrugs. Isn't that sad? Star Wars, the greatest sci-fi ever made, because, well, screw you, Star Trek fans. The greatest sci-fi, science fiction movie ever made, science fiction series, destroyed. Down to the point where people just go, oh yeah, did you see a new Star Wars movie? And they're like, eh, well. And you're talking to the real fans, the guys that have collected every originally tr original trilogy figure, every toy. And they're just thinking to themselves, yeah, oh, well, I don't know. I myself have a massive collection of Star Wars toys. From the Falcon to the Beaming to the Wiring to the Yet, I have all these things. Do I have any pre prequel stuff? No, no, I don't. I have a friend who is such a Star Wars fan that he has prequel stuff. This is an example of where Star Wars has got to. People are just shrugging. The big fans, the super fans, just a shrug. Go check out the Fandom Menace. I mean, Jeremy was a bit crazy originally about The Force Awakens, but he got there eventually. He was a bit slow. It's just a shrug. That's all Star Wars is. And it's just so goddamn sad. So, 
we will wait for the audience score to come in for the rise of Skywalker or the fall of Skywalker, death of the Star Wars, death of the Skywalker saga. That's what they should have called it. Star Wars, the death of the Skywalker memory. Because, well, fuck you fans. This is when movies suck. Hopefully, they'll just redo this shit one day. But unfortunately, probably without the original actors. Signing out. Leave a like, share, subscribe. I will catch you guys on the flip side.